a lot of people that are basically hitting me up and they hit me up for coaching calls and they saying, Anti, can you help me? Let me help some of y'all. Let me help some of y'all, okay? I'm going to give you my one word, great, great way, after, at, as a summary for what I'm about to say to y'all. Some of us don't necessarily have a earning problem. Let me say it for the people in the back. Some of us don't necessarily have an earning problem. Y'all are calling me and y'all leveraging the information that's out of the Patreon. I just dropped a Patreon video this weekend. I show you what I earn. I will never be the leader of the bag chasers. I will relinqu relinquish my crown if I am not making at least two to three million dollars a year. I will relinquish my crown if I am not making at least two to three million dollars a year. I show my receipts. The receipts are in the Patreon. You can go and watch any of the most recent videos. Make sure you tap into the Discord. If you're not a bag chaser, then I feel bad for you because we running it up. And so the problem is that you're not, it's not that you're not leveraging the information in order to make as much money as possible. Y'all got a spending problem. Shout out to Timbo Ups. I'm going to read that super chat shortly. Y'all got a spending. It's not that y'all not making money. A lot of people are struggling out here, but a lot of the struggling is self-inflicted wounds. Let me take a sip because we're going to, I got a feeling it's going to be one of them shows today. If you have not shared this with your family and friends, we got a problem. Listen, I don't care if you make 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, a million dollars a year. I don't care what you make. Most of y'all, getting rich is not difficult. Making the money to get rich is not difficult. Managing the money effectively is difficult. And part of it is, why you want to bring me to the front of the congregation, Jesse? You want to bring me to the front of the congregation? Why, why, what did I do? Except for show the receipts. Part of it is, it's not that y'all don't make enough money. Some of it is self-inflicted wounds. A lot of it is what you take in on a regular basis. I keep telling y'all, I keep beating you in the head. Every single week. Every single week. I beat you in the head. And I tell you, listen. Stop taking in. This nonsense on a regular basis. Do you know why I switched this, this platform? Because this wasn't the original After Hours. The original After Hours was this platform. This changed into the Millionaire Morning Show. I eventually came back to After Hours after we accomplished what we wanted to accomplish on the Morning Show. And the reason why I created this platform or I pivoted with this platform is because I wanted to make sure that you guys got what you needed as far as staying encouraged in the daytime and not at the night, not at nighttime, because hopefully you'll live your life a little bit better on a daily basis, and that's why it's important for me not to miss. And so when I give you this inspiration, when I come to you, when we talk about these issues, when we understand that everything comes back down to the money, if you're not making informed decisions on a daily basis, then what are we doing it for? Because we might as well just make this an afternoon show, 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 4 p.m., because you guys have a spending problem. You don't have an earning problem. I see y'all money on a daily basis. I see some of y'all making 100, 120, 130. Oh, Anton, I can't figure it out. You didn't watch the budget video, the only video that you watch. It's like reading the Bible, but you're only reading certain scriptures. Handpicking what you want to use in it, because now we, I think we've grown beyond the chew the meat, spit out the bone. No, I want you to eat your whole plate. When we put this plate in front of you, when I give you this game, when I tell you what it is that you're supposed to do, when I say, hey, listen, this is all encompassing. It's not just about making money. You also have to make sure that you have good character. You also got to make sure that you budget correctly. You can make a lot of money, but it's just going to make you a worse person or it's going to mess up your, your finances or it's going to put you in an a even worse hole because you're going to adjust your spending according to whatever your habits are. But if you didn't work on all of the other things that we talk about, then it's, all, it's just going to make you mess up even worse. And so I'm past, we pass that. The chew the meat, spit out the bones is for people that want a social media talking point. What I need you to do is eat this whole meal because I want you to have the meat, I want you to have the vegetables, 
I want you to make sure you drink water to go along with it. And then if you're really good at what it is that you're doing and you're doing it correctly, then we're going to give you the dessert to go along with that, right? And the reason that that is is because you can't have one without the other and expect to be successful because if you make a lot of money, but then you you haven't changed your mindset towards how it is that you operate, and this is why even the Bible itself says, be faithful and little one, then I'll make you ruler over much. You have to prove yourself to be successful and then scale up because if you get it, you're just going to crash out. And so when I look at y'all budgets and I say, okay, well, listen, you make this amount of money, you make this amount of money. And then once we go through the budget, because y'all only want to talk about how much money you make it, but you don't want to talk about how much money you spend it. You don't even have a budget. You don't even have a calendar. You don't have no blueprint for how it is that you structure in your life so that when you start to make more money, you just scale up the same budget. I've been using the same budget since I was making forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a year. It's the same budget. It doesn't change. All we do is adjust the numbers. We adjust the scale. The percentages change. How much you allocate towards this. And so if you discipline, then you don't. Oh, my God. What is up? So I'm frozen. We frozen. There we go. As soon as I get in my bag, we start getting frozen. Let me see if I can fix this real quick. Give me a second. <sighs> All right, we back. But if if you're not if you're not focused, if you're not making the adjustments, then you're just gonna crash out. You literally gonna be you gonna crash out. And so I need y'all to really, really be to dial down. Let's do it like this, all right? Let's back up for a minute. Let's start back over. And let's get back to ground zero, all right? The same, the same mentality and the same mindset that we, that we had going into this is the same mentality that we're going to have going forward. We got to get back to basics. We got to get back to basics. You cannot keep doing this and thinking that you're going to get different results. You're more stressed than ever. You know what I see from women today? I'm going to be honest with you because I see it more from women than men. Women are operating like men because they're in the same space mentally as a man. You can't work your way to being fiscally responsible. You can't out earn your habits it's no way that you can out earn your addictions hunter biden was out there with his drawers off over there in california embarrassing his daddy despite how much money that he made and despite his education that his father gave him you can't outrun and out earn your addictions you have to get some structure stop dating broke and when I say dating broke, stop dating people that are broke because all y'all doing is trauma bonding. Get yourself a budget. Stop thinking that you can out earn your addictions. Stop leaning into financing. Throw away the idea that you need good credit and time, but we still need good credit. I agree. You should have good credit, but good credit is a reflection of having good spending habits. So you shouldn't have to, you shouldn't have to fix your credit if you actually managing your money more effectively, that's the whole point. You don't have to try to have good credit. If you have good spending habits, you don't have to worry about trying to get good credit. That's what I'm trying to teach you. Why do you have to try to figure out, oh man, I need to fix my credit. No, you need to fix your spending habits. Throw away all of the credit cards. That don't mean you got to cancel them, but you need to throw them away for a while because you don't need them. Klarna, Afterpay, all of this stuff got y'all looking stupid out here. And you're not, look, by the time you get done spending on it because you justified getting the credit card in the first place because A, you wanted to fix your credit, and then B, you wanted to make sure that you build credit, and then C, you wanted to make sure that you got the points. You don't even got enough money. You don't even spend enough money for the points to be relevant. But they enticed you to get it in order for you to get a free flight a year. Come on, man. Tell me you didn't fall for the points, okie doke, for the rope of dope that they threw with the points at you. I'm going to go get another job, Anton. Well, you can do that. But the problem is that you haven't learned how to manage whatever it is that you got already. 
And so y'all looking stupid out here in these streets. Women got a whole lot of debt. Men is out here just fumbling the bag, trying to get a charger and a Hellcat. You paying all of this money for a car to impress somebody that don't even care about you? If she wasn't rolling with you in a car that you got, then why are you doing it? Yo, listen, listen. I heard this crazy story. And then we're going to get into the show. I heard the craziest story ever. Guy talks to girl. Girl is a high earner. Check it out. See student's perspective. I'm going to simplify it for you. Guy talks to girl. Guy has a job. Guy is solidly middle class. Who knows? Probably making somewhere between a, around a $70,000, $75,000 a year. Girl makes $200,000 plus a year. Guy, girl, get married. Big wedding. Guy has a home that is already paid for. Girl comes into guy's life and feels like he's not pushing himself enough because they want a bigger house. Girl convinces guy because guy is a simp to move into a bigger house because now they have a greater income. Girl also has debt, lots of debt. But girl feels like she's not or he's not on her level because he doesn't earn as much as her, but he manages money more effectively and he was living a comfortable lifestyle. Now guy is crying because girl has over leveraged them as a family because they were unequally yoked as far as their mentality of how money works. And now they out here in a rat race just like everybody else. Did you catch the, did you catch the moral of the story? Did you catch the moral of the story? Just because you make a lot of money don't mean that you're not broke. We so caught up. We so caught up that we don't take a minute to step back and realize the mess that we've created for ourselves. Now, that's a real story. That's a real story. Guy making a regular amount of money, happy with his life, comfortable with his job, fell in love, and now he fell in debt because he basically inherited the mindset, the bad habits, and all of the debt that came along with girl that felt like she needed to push him to make more money in order to manage their lifestyle that they didn't even need to continue to finance because now they over leveraged, but they leaned into love instead of understanding that marriage is a business first, but it doesn't come without love. Also, they can create this facade of a life to present to the people, but they crying on the inside. Let's focus, y'all. 